Welcome inside episode 494 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains and coming up, Thomas Shabbat joins us on Locked On Senators. Fantastic chat with him about everything from his minor hockey, his growing up in Quebec City, to becoming an all-star defenseman in the NHL. Big stick taps to Thomas Shabbat for joining the show. And, Ross, always nice to come into the week with a W behind you. And the Ottawa Senators beat the Washington Capitals 4-1. Brady Kachuk scored a goal. Nick Paul gets the bike helmet. What a game. We'll get into that. And we've also got some prospect updates from the 2021 NHL Draft. So you'll want to stick around for all that and more. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Dot net bet online has you covered this season for more props odds and lines than ever before bet online where the game starts now let's get in to locked on senators it's your team every day locked on senators your daily podcast on the ottawa senators part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Monday, February 14th. And Pilsy, what better time for Thomas Shabbat to get a Sen Central bump than when he hits his 300th NHL game tomorrow? Exactly. and uh, But we're hoping that he does play tomorrow, Ross, because he did take that big hit behind the net in uh, yesterday's game. And he didn't play a whole lot in the back half of the third period. So... Fingers crossed that he gets the send central bump for tomorrow's game up against the St. Louis Blues. And Alex Formanton also took a big hit, Ross. So there was a couple um, tough, tough plays for the Sens. But they get the last laugh here as they beat the Washington Capitals 4-1. A game that, really, when you're looking at the schedule, that's when you probably think they lose rather than win. Especially after coming off two back-to-back games, not scoring a goal and losing 2 nothing. But the boys bounce back. Brady wanted to wrap this up quickly so he could get to his Super Bowl party, and they end up getting the win here. So when it comes to those hits, with Thomas Shabbat, I think he'd tell you too, that was a clean hit from Tom Wilson. Heavy, but clean. Stick taps to Nick Paul for standing up for his leader on the team right there, his co-alternate captain as well. But then that Formington hit, I wouldn't be surprised if Garnet Hathaway gets a call from the player safety department because – Formanton didn't even touch the puck. He wasn't even close to play. Blindside hit. Yeah. Gets him in like that upper chest, close to the chin area, and it just did not look good. Alex Formanton did not play after that hit. It was midway through the third period, whereas Thomas Shabbat at least did come back and play. Not the, the amount that he usually would, as you mentioned. His hit was in the second period. In the third, he only played four minutes. So yeah. you're right, a lot less. But those types of hits... You worry about the concussion spotter and all that. So clearly they gave him the okay to go back out there. It was a game that was in control up 3-1. And then ultimately Connor Brown scores to make it a 4-1 game. So you're not relying on Shabbat to play heavy minutes to come back as they would have tried against Boston and against Pittsburgh. So from that standpoint, I think there's something to be said that Shabbat will likely be in the lineup. Tomorrow, we hope so. Otherwise, man, we hope that's, so. That's the opposite of a Send Central bump. So, all that to say, the Senators get back in the win column, four one, the final score. And does Connor Brown just make sure that he he lets everyone know that he is a huge part of this team since he's been back? Like, yeah, the team couldn't score the last two games, but man, this guy is just such an impactful player. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great game by Connor Brown and Ross. Game high in ice time for Connor Brown. 25 minutes, 41 25 seconds. 25 minutes. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and we talked about it on the postcast. Liam's Martian was like, how did he end up racking up so many minutes? Well, he put it in six and a half minutes on the power play and three minutes and 47 seconds shorthanded. A goal, an assist, like another excellent game from Connor Brown, who, thank goodness, um, he, he's got his jaw protected because this is a guy they really need out there. And He's been lighting it up for them. Him and Alex Formanton together are becoming a great pair. And obviously, we know the chemistry between him and Nick Paul. And I actually really like that line with Brady on there too, Ross. What did you think? Yeah, I, I love those two together. I'm I'm hoping that 
They can get maybe a little more speed down the middle. I'd like to see them try it with Stutzla. He didn't get a whole lot of opportunity with those two. So that'd be nice. I just looked up the most ice time for a forward in a single game this year. And I'm actually shocked that there's so many guys with more than Connor Brown's 25-41. That's the 39th most ice time in a single what? game by a forward. I thought it'd at least be top 10. Well, McDavid's probably cracked a, that a bunch of times, no? Yes, McDavid is one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Eight of I, those, including two of the top three. I was. This might mess up your stats, and I won't make you dig into this, but how many of those are only regulation games? You know what I mean? Can't tell you. Yeah, if you get the overtime in there, top players are going to get at least another three minutes. So Right. Well, McDavid's uh, high this season is 27.57. Wow, yeah. Yeah, insane. All that to say, though, that Connor Brown, man, that was a game high, right? He played more than any game defenseman high. in the game as well. So yeah. that that just speaks to how valuable he is. And then not only is he playing those minutes, but he's contributing within them. He gets a goal. He gets an assist again. And he's just all over the ice. I absolutely love what we're seeing out of him. He would have been a great candidate for the bike helmet as well. They were probably curious and wondering if it was going to mess up his face, though because he's got the chin tray going right now as well. But Nick Paul certainly worthy of that big country Nick Paul, as Chris Tierney big called country. him in the locker room. So, man, just another step, hopefully, in the direction of him re-signing. We spoke yes. about that on Friday's Locked On Senders. You can always go back and listen to every Locked On Senders podcast wherever you download yours, including on YouTube. May we recommend watching today's episode on YouTube. We've got Thomas Shabbat coming up in just a moment, Pilsy. I guess we could point people to the postcasts from Saturday and Sunday if they want a deeper dive into the two games. Absolutely. Yeah, the postcast is always a good time, whether it's a win or a loss. We love having you guys there. The chat is always on fire. Laleem's Martian, a great recurring guest. And the best part about it is Ross gets the postcast out right away after. So let's say you miss the game, you miss the postcast. Well, you can listen or watch right after or on your way to work the next morning. So check it out, the postcast. And yes, the Sens have been successful during the postcast era. So why not join in on the good times? We're not crediting ourselves for it. God, that would be so vain. But if you want to, we'll accept it. Senders goaltending has been elite over this stretch. Anton Forsberg had a great game. We touch on all that in the postcast. But you're here for the Thomas Shabbat interview. We know it and we're fired up for it as well. That's why I had two built bars this morning to get myself in a great state of mind. Built Bar is the protein bar of the Locked On Podcast Network for great reason as well. Built Bars are the protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. They come in 16 amazing flavors as well. They're 100% covered in chocolate. They're soft. They're easy to chew. Built Bars are also great for the health-conscious guy or girl because you can lose or maintain weight while indulging in a delicious treat. The bars are low in calorie, low in sugar, but they're high in protein and high in fiber. That is is a nutritional grand slam. Go to BuiltBar.com right now and use our promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order just like that. BuiltBar.com, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your next order. All right, here he is. Senators, franchise defenseman and NHL All-Star, Thomas Shabbat. All right, we now welcome a very... Very special guest. Born and raised in Saint-Marie, Quebec, his hockey journey took him through St. John before being chosen 18th overall by the Sens in 2015. He's also represented Team Canada on five occasions and remains the only defenseman in World Juniors history to win tournament MVP. Now he's closing in on 300 NHL games and since 2019, only one player has more ice time than his 4,266 minutes, man. I'm exhausted just saying that. Simply put, he's one of the premier players in the National Hockey League. Thomas Shabbat, welcome to Locked On Senators. How are you doing today, man? Good, how are you? A nice little intro, boys. I like it. Thank we you. Just want, we just want to get the vibes going right off the bat, and it has to be good around the team right now. You guys can't stop winning since early November. What's been the turnaround like, not only in the locker room, but must be nice feeling knowing you got a couple goalies back there that can stop the puck, and now you're starting to put the puck in the back of the net as well. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. I think everybody... Uh... Everybody's kind of coming around. I think we're playing as a team, and obviously it's uh, it's been fun. We've been losing some big pieces throughout the season. Uh, when you look back on all the injuries we've had, and obviously that that stretch like we were talking just before we started recording, just with uh, that November stretch with COVID and 
um, a, a lot of guys coming in and out the lineup. So it's been, it's been uh, uh, tough at times. Uh, we're not going to lie here, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just nice to see the team coming around and really uh, stepping up to the plate. We got some guys playing in different roles and are really stepping up to it. And um, I mean, overall, it's been, it's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun to play and um, obviously nothing better than playing hockey and winning games. That's, that's, that's what we do every night. We want to come out and, and win as many hockey games as we can. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to watch too, Thomas, uh, especially lately. The boys have been buzzing. And uh, But I want to ask you, when all the COVID shutdowns were happening and the postponements, and you're going weeks without playing, which is very strange for uh, for you guys mid-season, how were you guys able to stay focused throughout that stretch, like uh, December where you didn't play till the new year, and then even the new year came and you guys had a couple weeks off till your next game. How, what was the energy like, and what was the kind of way the team was able to stay together during that stretch? Well, I mean, a lot of it had to, had to do that. We had guys, uh, including myself, uh, going into the protocol a couple of times. We had some guys coming in and out of it. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, mostly for us was, was about uh, keeping the pace high in practice and uh, getting ready. There's so much unknown. There's a lot of rumors that we might be playing uh, uh, one game, then the night before, a day before, then they would get canceled. So there's a lot of... Uh, unknown just like it's been the last two years I mean it's it's like it's the world that we live in now with uh with COVID so uh it's something that we kind of expect but um I mean at the end of the day the, the coaching staff did a great job we had some days that it was just really about uh playing games and getting the uh a competitive level uh back to, to to playing hockey and it was it was a lot of fun I think we we managed to find a way to skate uh stay in shape and stay ready for games and and obviously when we got back ever since it's, it's been really good for our team We've uh, heard a lot about DJ Smith practices. How would you describe how he runs the ship? They're pretty quick. Uh, they're quick practices, but they're high tempo. That there's not a there's not a lot of time spent at the board. It's really you get out there. We all know the drills, and it's it's a high pace practice. And that's that's kind of been how we've been playing during the season as well. When you look at our games, it's uh, uh, we're fast teams. We don't uh, we're a fast team. We we don't give the other the other team a whole lot of time and space and. Uh, we take a lot of pride in that, and that's something that we uh, and, and the coaching staff has been been doing a good job of uh, practice. We don't uh, we don't waste a whole lot of time out there. We really just get to work, and we get what we have to work on, and 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 call it a practice, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, you can certainly see it on the ice, man. You guys play fast, especially on the forecheck. It's a really entertaining brand of hockey to watch. And as you guys develop, it's just getting better and better. Thomas, uh, we got a couple more questions for this year, but I, we like rewinding the clock all the way back when we have guys on to the beginning. Like you grew up yeah. 40 kilometers away from Quebec City. How do you first remember falling in love with the game? To be honest with you, most of it had to do with my brother. I have a brother that's four years older than me. And uh, just like any other little brother, it's... Uh, you just want to do everything your older brother does. So I was kind of just following him, probably being uh, really annoying and following him everywhere and going, uh, going to play hockey. But we, we spent so much time in, in our basement. Uh, my, if, if my parents would be on here, they could tell you so much about it. I used to spend countless hours in the basement, putting on the rollerblades, uh, shooting pucks. I played, and like, like we always say, I played a lot of uh, Stanley cup game sevens in my basement with my brother and, uh, uh, you know what, too, uh, we were fortunate enough growing up to have an outdoor rink about 30 seconds away from the house. So uh, my entire, like our, our whole neighborhood was, what, 10 to 12, um, 10 to 12 guys that were the oldest being four years older, which would be my brother and the youngest would be me. So everybody was in the same range. Everybody's playing hockey. So uh, we definitely spent a lot of time out there in the um I mean, it, it probably started there. I think my, my dad played hockey his whole life. Uh, my brother did as well. So I think it's kind of just in our family. Now, as a younger brother, Thomas, was there ever any instances where, where your older brother's like, all right, throw the pads on, get a net here. I'm going to just blast pucks at you as hard as I can here. Or how <laughs> did you manage to stay as a defenseman and not have to take the duties of a goalie? Oh, there's a lot of times, too many times. I think we we got in so many fights just for, uh, who wanted to be the goalie? So we we managed to find a way to just be in uh, whoever won the game, then then would get to pick who the goalie was. So that's there you go. that's the way that's that's what we did. But uh, but no, I mean my brother. Obviously, we we got just like any other uh, brother duos. You, you get in a lot of fight, and uh, 
Uh, most of the time I, it would end up me going upstairs crying because my brother was older than me, but, um, but no, I mean, it, it was all fun. Those are all great memories. He's, uh, he's, he's supported me the whole way through it. I supported him his entire uh, hockey career. And, and I mean, we've, we've had a blast. Those are memories that, uh, that will last a lifetime. And, uh, probably the reason why I fell in love with hockey, just, just trying to be better than my brother. And, uh, that's all it was for me, really. You got a few less penalty minutes than him. I was looking at his elite prospects page though. Yeah, I know. He, he tends to, he tends to lose it a bit more than I do on the ice. I'm more of the composed brother and he's more the, the, the acting one and just goes out there and hits everyone. Hey, good, uh, good guy to have on your side. I'm sure growing up too, whenever somebody's, you know, you know, giving you a little bit of trouble off the ice, you'd be there to stand up for you. The, uh, the first time I saw some, the first time I got to see you play Thomas was I was living in Halifax. You're playing with St. John at the time. I don't, I'm not going to assume that you remember one game. You played like 200 in the queue, but you ended up scoring on a breakaway in overtime. How would you describe, you remember that in in, uh, Halifax? Yeah, yeah, I tweeted out after. I said, this guy's going to be a lead NHL defenseman. So credit <laughs> to me. I'm the one who scouted you. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, the Q game, it's obviously a little more wide open. So how did you adjust from being able to rush the puck and have multiple breakaways as a defenseman to then getting to a league where it's like, oh man, I got to tighten up on the back end here and the offense will come eventually. Yeah, you know what? I was working a lot with Paul Butier that, uh, that, that was a head, uh, defensive coach in St. John with us. Uh, I'm still working with him uh, to this day. And, um, you know, that was one of the big parts in, in being my last season when I was 19 in St. John is um, a lot of it. We knew that for me to make take the step to the NHL level the next year, I would uh, need to be better in my own zone, which is always the biggest thing for a younger defenseman coming in the NHL. But um, we did a lot of work with that. But obviously, as as the last season went, we had such a good team. We didn't really spend a whole lot of time in our own zone. So it was kind of hard to, uh, to manage this whole thing. But um, obviously when I came back and when I was 20, uh, spent a few games, a few weeks in the American league, I think that made me learn a lot and obviously um, got fortunate enough to, to not spend a whole lot of time down there and really get a shot at playing in each other right away. And um, obviously it, it, it's, it's never going to be perfect, but I think, if I look back on my first uh, year in the NHL and, and the way I've been playing in my own zone this year, I think it's, 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 uh, it's a big major step in, in the way I've been playing. And, and that's something I take a lot of pride in. And um, like I said, DJ has been doing a lot of work with me as well. We do, we, we spend a lot of time doing some videos and small little corrections. And I think uh, obviously I like where my game's at right now. Obviously the offensive side of it's always going to be there. And um you always want to produce. You always want to do as best as you can. But in reality, just the, the, the way I've been playing in both ways of the S is something I'm proud of right now. Yeah, and I mean, your play on the ice was a big reason why the Ottawa Senators drafted you when they did. Now, let's. I always love hearing about guys' stories on draft day. So uh, take us through your day. Were you expecting the Ottawa Senators to draft you? Like, had you had a bunch of meetings and you're like, oh, yeah, this went well. I think I could see a match here. Or was it a bit of a surprise when they they picked you? Well, obviously at the combine, I kind of, I, I think I met with uh, almost every single team. I think there's one or maybe two of them that I didn't meet with. I can't really okay. remember which ones, but maybe Boston um, three picks in a row. Oops. Yeah. I actually met with them. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Cause they, they ended drafted, up taking uh, your D yeah, partner. They, yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, Zaboral that used to yep. play with me in St. John. Yeah. Um, but no, I think it's uh, the, the draft day was just special. I think I, I had the chance to, to, to do the combine meet every single team. Then Calgary uh, flew me in uh, Calgary to just see the facilities. Like they, uh, it was always the joke around with my family. It's just like they had to sell me something. It was just like for me, just being drafted in the NHL was going to be, uh, it didn't matter where. I just wanted to, to have the chance to do that one day. And, uh, but no, I went to Calgary. Then I went to Ottawa as well. So obviously going into the draft, I, I, I thought, good chances probably one of those two teams are going to pick me right but uh, just a couple hours or maybe the day before Calgary traded their pick uh, like you just said with Boston ended up having three picks so I guess kind of like when Ottawa came around I was uh, that was kind of like my only hope I didn't really have uh, didn't really have a whole lot of um, a feel through it I, I wasn't sure I knew the interviews were uh, went pretty well and um, my agent Dominic Dubois with me never really 
wanted to give me like hopes type thing. So we kind of always kept it uh, uh, kind of like more on the DL on the download, just to keep it quiet and see how the date's going to go. And then when Ottawa came around, I think that was pretty cool. I was fortunate enough to have my draft in, in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, so obviously a, a lot of friends and family and um, came down early. So we kind of made it a little vacation at the same time. So uh, when that day came, obviously my parents just had my parents and brother beside me. That was really special. And obviously to have, I think I had 50 people with me from my hometown that just on their own flew out to Fort, uh, Fort Lauderdale for their draft. So the whole experience was pretty cool, but um, just, just a, to be able to live that day, my parents, my brother, that was, that was the highlight for me for sure. That's awesome. And you get to share it with someone who you're born on the same day as you and Colin White, three yeah, picks apart. Was that your first time getting to meet Colin White? Cause I know now you guys have quite the friendship. Yeah. Uh, it was the first time I actually met him in person. We played a couple of times on international level against each other, but um, that was really the first time I actually met him. And it was pretty uh, it was pretty funny to, to to meet someone that's born on the exact same day as me and being drafted the same team. That, that that's still to this day a little running uh, joke, but uh, no, that was definitely a special day. We uh, we laughed. There's a photo of you and Whitey. It must have been at development camp where you're in the locker room. I don't know if you know. You're guys like back to back with your arms crossed. It's a hilarious photo, you guys. Why does yeah, everyone remember, always yeah. Why does everyone always smile when they hear the name Colin White? Like, what's yeah. it about this guy? He's just infectious, eh? Oh, man. The crazy. guy, the guy's just pure entertainment. It's just, it's, it's every single day. There's, there's something new. There's just, I mean, he's, he's just great. It's just whitey. It's hard to explain that. I think you're <laughs> around him. He makes everybody laugh and um, no, he's a great, I, I'm lucky enough to be really close to him. And obviously, like you said, we got drafted the same year together. We kind of went through the same thing. Obviously injuries kind of uh, been hurting them the last couple of years but I mean just just be around this guy it just brings a smile on your face every single day and he's just the the ultimate locker room guy and everybody loves just hearing his stories and hearing his jokes and he's just like I said it's just whitey there's no way to put it there's no other way to put it that's exactly what uh, both we had Angus Crookshank who's been training obviously getting in rehab with him recently and Pinto who lives with him they both came on yeah. and nobody can describe why he is the way he is but <laughs> hey that's awesome great teammates go a long way in, in the grind of oh, a, yeah. a season we got to talk about the biggest highlight of your NHL career December 6th this year you were awarded the bike helmet and shape <laughs> oh yeah what an honor where the hell did that oh, thing yeah. come from you know what it came from I, I wow where that came from that came from I, I'd like to say a Halloween party okay that we've had and I might have to double check that one um, but I think it was a Halloween party and it, we just thought it was funny it was just something funny and then we uh, just kind of stuck with it I think it's it's something that everybody kind of remembers and everybody uh, when they see the helmet they just see some funny out of it and it, it just kind of been uh, sticking to it. And I think you guys seen it on social media guys make a pretty good uh, scene every time they get it. Um, obviously Nick Holt and Nikki Holden was, was one of the, probably the best, uh, the video just yelling and screaming. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was awesome. I mean, it's, those are all the things that we, it's, it's hard to find something every year and, and, and to find something that everybody just kind of really enjoys. That's what makes it even better at the end of every game. Yeah, the fans love watching the bike helmet videos too. That's a, yeah. a highlight after a W. We're always waiting. All right, who's getting the helmet? What's the speech before? Got, and we D do a show. DJ after says, every, "Hit the music." After every game, we have a show, and our first poll is, "Who's got the bike helmet today?" Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and That's now awesome. another uh behind the scenes video that we all loved was the home opener brady kachuk is in the building and the best moment for for me was when you walk into the room thomas and you see him and you go to dap him up and then you're like wait that, that's brady and then you do an extra big little hug because you're so excited to see him what was the mood for you guys when sure you'd obviously love to have brady playing in that game with you but when you hear the deal is announced he's in the building he's getting the crowd fired up and you guys win the game and get to see him after like describe that from your perspective because for the that fans was, that was awesome. it was unreal yeah no it was definitely awesome I mean at the it's that's that's always the side of hockey that's the business side that's yep. uh not not as great obviously but it's it's reality of things and it's uh uh the way it is but I mean when we saw him coming in obviously we knew at some point he was going to be back and to see him on the home opener obviously and 
Um, I mean, he's been such a good player for this organization. So to have the chance to see him after the game, I think everybody was just happy, obviously, after a big win. Um, the home opener, every time you get uh, a sold out crowd, all your fans are excited to start the season. It's always one of the biggest games of the year. You want to start with a win and um, to get the win and to, to, to have Brady back. Obviously, the group uh, was definitely very happy about that. And when the Sens fans can do a beat the traffic chant for the Leafs nation and, and the blues all quiet, it just adds to it. We were in the crowd for that one. Uh, speaking yeah. of the business side though, we just chatted with Craig Medaglia who put together the Spider-Man video when you had your contract extension yeah, so good. a year out. What was your initial reaction when you got to see that one? That video was awesome. It's I, I didn't <laughs> expect that at all. And it just kind of, Obviously, when you sign the, the day, you sign like it's a pretty busy day, a bunch of interviews, and, and you don't really go uh, through your phone because you get a tons of message from from family, friends, everything. Um, so it was a busy day, and then everybody kind of started uh, started like talking about the video, and I was like, I mean, I haven't seen any videos. And then when we hopped online with my agents, it's um, we loved the video. It was awesome. We we thought it was so funny. It's so well done. And, um but no i mean overall it's just a great day anytime you get to uh to, to commit to to being in ottawa Sanders for the next eight years that was something very important to me and um ever since i've been here they treated me so well and i want to bring this team to to stanley cup one day so to to commit eight years was obviously a special day for me do you live here round round year most mostly uh, i usually yeah. tend to go home for a month or maybe two in the summer depending on on obviously with COVID, everything's been a bit more weird the last two years. But uh, no, we we have the house here. We uh, we have a uh, a nice nice uh, setup for the summer here. So uh, we spend a lot of time here, play a lot of golf here. There's a couple of guys staying in town, Austin Watson, Nick Paul as well. So we nice. we play a lot of golf together. And um, uh, but no, I spend I spend quite a lot of time, mostly a year around here. All right, guys, hope you're enjoying our chat with Thomas Shabbat, but we got to interrupt for a quick second for a word from one of our favorite sponsors. It's betonline.net. As you guys know, I had a massive bet for the Bengals on the Super Bowl. That one didn't pan out, but I had a lot more fun watching the game knowing I had a little bit of action on it. And you can get some action on the game to get off the sidelines, get in the action, and go to betonline.net, the trusted online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network and the Locked On Senators podcast. They've got all the odds. You may be thinking Super Bowl's over, NFL's over. Well, don't worry. You can bet on hockey. You can bet on basketball. You can bet on golf. You can bet on UFC. There's so many different things you can do at betonline.net. There's casino games as well. So if you're looking to play some roulette, some blackjack, they've got it at betonline.net. The fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play all your favorite games. Guys, check it out today. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Now back to our chat with Thomas Shabbat. Give a shout out. All these local restaurants are, are on their way back. What's your favorite spot to eat in town? You know what? I got a lot of them. There's a lot of them, <laughs> but my my probably, I mean, there's, I, I'm a big Italian food guy, which Giovanni is the treat. There's oh, such yeah. great people over there, but I mean, there's, there's so many of them. We try to make it, uh, uh, to go to different places every single time and, and try to support as best as we can. Obviously, we know it's been tough for them the last couple uh, years uh, slash months, but uh, no, there, there's there's a few of them that we uh, we like going to. And uh, I mean, we're, we're lucky, honestly. It's here in Ottawa where you get the, the chance to have a bunch of different uh, options for food and nice restaurants. So it's, it's, it's awesome. We like going out. We like enjoying nice dinners. That's awesome. No, it's a great community and an awesome restaurant scene. So I had to get that one in there. Just a couple more for you, Thomas. Really appreciate you jumping on with us. It's a huge uh, get for us here as we're getting, this can be episode 500 of our show. So it's a huge milestone to get you to join us is, is huge as well. I got to go back to your rookie year. Now there was, you got that one game against Arizona right off the bat before going yeah. back to junior, but I think it was your first two training camps. You were paired with Eric Carlson. What did you learn from him at the peak of this guy's career? He was like top five player in the world at the time. And you're just coming in, starting to get your feet wet. What was, what was the relationship and conversations like through those training camps? I mean, it was, it was, it couldn't, couldn't have really been any better. I think for an offensive young defenseman to come in the NHL and to get the chance to play with arguably probably one of the best offensive defensemen. I think it was, it was, it was awesome. I think he just, 
just to see all the kinds of play that he could make. I mean, when you look back on um, when he was in Ottawa, it's on the blue line. Every shot that he takes, every shot goes through, every passes. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a special talent. And um, obviously not only to just play with them, but to be around with them at the rank and get to know uh, him a bit more, obviously it was special. I mean, we didn't, uh, didn't spend a, a whole lot, like a, a lot of years together either. But I mean, for the time that I was there, it was just great to see how good he is of a player. And even my first season, uh, probably halfway through the year, I got the chance to play a couple of games with them on the pairing as well. So it, everything was awesome. I really enjoyed that time. Yeah, we loved watching you guys play together. And now uh, you were the young guy playing with a great defenseman. Now the roles are kind of reversed here as you're you're the established NHL defenseman and you've got a chance to play with a bunch of young guys this year. JBD, uh, Brandstrom, Lassie Thompson. What's it like um, as a more veteran defenseman having to play with these young guys who are just getting their uh, feet wet playing in the NHL? What's that experience like for you now? I mean, it's been good. I mean, it's, uh, I always look back. I was, I was fortunate enough when my first year coming in, I had so many great guys uh, helping me come into the league and uh, just supporting me through good games to bad games. And uh, there's so much to learn in the NHL. I mean, yeah. you, you, we all come out of juniors, obviously, uh, or wherever you play uh, for me, juniors, everyone's coming out as the top players, the best players, getting all the minutes, playing power play PK. And uh, you get to the NHL and you realize that, uh, well, maybe you're not as close as you thought you were or as good as you thought you were, right? Because the league is so hard. Every night you play against uh, the best players in the world and there's there's uh, no night off, obviously. That's uh, something you learn as well. So, um, but no, I mean, just to just be around those guys. I think there's there's such... Uh, a talented young group of guys on our team that um, and obviously when you, you you go into games and you make mistakes when you're younger it's so easy to just uh, get down on yourselves and, and on yourself and um, I think the biggest thing for me the, the best tip I always give those guys is, is one mistake doesn't uh, uh, describe the player you are or the game you had right it's, it's just one mistake so you got to learn how um, to, to move on from it and, and playing in this league, the, the positive thing too is uh, you could play a tough game the one night, but you get the chance to either do it the next day or uh, 48 hours later. So, um, I mean, this is all part of the learning. We're getting deep into it, but I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, the guys are so talented during, during the NHL for a reason. And, and I think just being able to, to be alongside them and, and help them and obviously – uh, it's been it's been great. I mean, it's a different role and it, it's it, it came sooner than expected. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, that's something I embrace and something I want to uh, I want to try uh, try and help young guys. The quicker they can they can learn and be ready to play in the NHL and, and and make a good impact. I think it's it's the best for our team, and we're going to have success with that. Do you tell them to stay away from the net during warm up. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got to keep your got to keep your head up around the net. So what you bought Connor Brown. So for anyone who doesn't realize, shabby shot went off the post, got Connor right in the jaw, played nice through shot. the game. Nice shot. Goal and an assist yeah. with a broken jaw. So maybe you got to do it more often. But what's this? You got him as a, a, a little sorry present? Yeah, I got him a nice little backpack just uh, <laughs> to apologize. I mean, I mean, at the same time, it's unfortunate. It's not necessarily my fault or whatever, but at the same time, it's one of those shots that goes off the crossbar and he's skating by the net at the same time. I mean, it's 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 a scary thing nowadays. It, it, guys shoot so hard and, and the yeah. puck just bounces off the, um, the the post or even if you miss the net, it goes around the board and everything. So it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a scary thing, but I mean, at the end of the accident happens, I bought him a nice little gift and now we're all good. I'm pretty sure the Sens lead the league in bucketless warm-ups as well. Who spends the most time on their hair? It's got to be you or Drake. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Uh, Drake has been his, his new haircut this year has been has been money. He spends Looking a good. little bit of time on there. He's getting it uh, cut every other day. He's, he's got to look good for warm-up. But no, I, I'd like to say probably uh drake obviously brady and watson have short hair so they don't really have to spend a whole <laughs> lot of time so i'd probably go with me i got the longest hair it's, it takes a bit of time to to get it ready for warm-up 
Yeah, that's uh, we love seeing the boys with their flow in the warm up. Um, Thomas, last question for me. Thanks so much for joining us. This has been an absolute blast. Um, Ross mentioned it off the top. You you just play so many damn minutes. The mo- some of the most in the NHL. I gotta ask you how how are you so comfortable playing so many minutes? And and for you, is it kind of a thing where you're like. I like playing more because I can get into the groove of the game. And if you could have your ideal ice time, what, what would that be per game? Where do you uh, feel most comfortable playing? You know what? It's, it's, it's a tough answer, a uh, tough question to answer. Cause there's, there's so many different nights. Some nights you're going to feel like you could play 32 and some Fair. nights you yeah. feel like you could, you would only play 21 and it would be good enough. But um, but no, I mean, I've always said it. I love playing big minutes. I love being out there. Obviously, I've made uh, throughout my career, I've made some mistakes that, that, that that's going to happen, but I still want to be the guy out there again after like I, uh, when it's time to win a game or when it's time to, uh, to come back from the goal or something, I want to be out there, but, but no, I mean, it's, I've always said it, the coaching staff decides it, the, how much players play. And uh, I always, I always take uh, the, the ice time I'm given. I'm trying to make the best out of it, but obviously throughout Ever since junior, I've been playing some big minutes and I kind of got used to it. And um, But no, obviously, I, I love playing big minutes. I want to be out there. And I want to play as much as I can. Well, since DJ Smith took over as head coach, you've played under 20 minutes twice and both times you <laughs> left the game with injury. So clearly your Canada <laughs> sense fans absolutely love watching you out there, Thomas. Really appreciate you taking some time with us and continued success down the uh, this road. And man, the CTC is going to be so electric when you guys make it. Not if, when you guys make the playoffs, whether it's this year or next, and we're going to be there every step of the way. So keep up the great work, man, and only good things in the future. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Excited for the next couple of years to come, and uh, congrats to you guys on 500. Cheers to the next 500 more, boys. Stick taps to Thomas for joining us. That was a not-too-shabby interview, if I don't say so myself. Tons of respect, not only for him, but the Ottawa Senators, for setting that up for us huge appreciate it and man just a calm cool collected dude just like he plays on the ice hey pills yeah we are so stoked when we uh, got the news that we were going to be able to talk to thomas shabbat on the show full and- disclosure we we're supposed to do this in november yes. i may have teased it a little too much but we didn't exactly <laughs> say who it was however then covid runs through the team you understand why things had to be postponed and ultimately the vibes were much higher now than they would have been then. Yeah, even we told Thomas that, and he was like, yeah, much uh, much better <laughs> things going on <laughs> in February. And, hey, you know, he's been a big part of this team, and uh, we're still looking for the proper defense partner for him, but mm-hmm. it was great to get to hear his opinion on playing with some of the young guys too, right? Like, he talked about playing with Brandy, playing with JBD and Lassie. So it was awesome to get to hear from him, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy that interview as well. Could Ben Roger potentially be a dude <laughs> to play with Thomas Shabbat? Now, I say that tongue-in-cheek. However, Ben Roger doubled his point total on the season in two games this weekend, earning a goal and an assist against the Mississauga Steelheads on Saturday. And then on Sunday, another assist, another plus performance. So three points, plus three, four pims, and two shots on goal in a pair of games for the Kingston Frontenacs this weekend. And when you look at Ben Rogers' stats, Pilsy, like he's never going to be that offensive defenseman. But we've had some boots on the ground reports from listeners in Kingston say, man, this guy's steady Eddie back there. Huge reach, not overly physical, but always in the right spot. Think maybe like an Artem Zub type defenseman. And if he could develop into that with his size here, already at 6'5", still in the midst of a growth spurt and trying to learn how to play with that extra size, Like, nine points doesn't jump off the page in 39 games, but plus 14 as well, and 28 pims, so he's not afraid to mix it up a little bit at least. It's a start for the 2021 draft class. Absolutely, and I mean, there's a lot of road left for Ben Roger here, so as long as he's making progress, that's great. And while we're talking about the Kingston Frontenacs, Ross, goalie-friendly show, we got to talk about Levy Marilyn and a career-high 53 saves in a 5-4 win over Hamilton, he was the game's first star, courtesy of Sens Prospect, as always. And a nice little stat he threw in there, too. Marilina tied for second in the OHL with 21 wins. So, looks like Sens Prospects are getting things done, and uh, both our guys in Kingston are looking good lately. 
Well, we don't really have to get back to Ridley Gregg. We know what kind of guy he hmm. is, right? We talked about him uh, on Friday's show and in the postcast on Thursday because I was at the game there in Winnipeg on Thursday. But, of course, he goes no points in that game, but he bookends it. He's got three multi-point games in his last four, except for the one I was at. So he put out another two-assist performance on Saturday. And what I love about Ridley's game right now is his face-offs are well over 50% every single night. He needs more of that to go with what has been just an elite season full of scoring for him. So love to see Ridley continue his dominance. Um, on Saturday as well, Zach Ostapchuk had a three-assist night. So, hey, 2021 draft class, stay hot. Hopefully we get Tyler Boucher back for more than two minutes with the 67s here. Uh, he's still suffering from an upper body injury they're calling it. Jake Sanderson made his Olympic debut. And then he got, he was out. It seems like it's day to day though. He was posting on Instagram. He's at the big air ski uh, or maybe the snowboarding, but that big air, that's crazy. Like I'm not wow. a big heights guy. That's not for me. I think the Sens put out their Olympic video and yeah. he's like, <laughs> somebody was like, yeah, if I was okay with heights, then I would be a big air guy. Like, isn't that a pretty key component? That's kind of all there is to it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of guys say they could go skiing though. Yeah. hundred percent. Zaitsev being a curler blew my mind. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. He likes going one knee down, no blocking shots. So <laughs> maybe that's the whole thing. He wants to be a skip there, but that was a great video from the Sens. But Jake Sanderson, his, his Olympic debut is exactly what you would have expected from him. Just calm, cool, collected. The assist was a little bit of a jumbled play. Yeah. Like he gave the puck away in the neutral zone, got it back, and then started the rush off of that. So that's a decent play. But David Quinn, he couldn't help himself. Like halfway through the first period, all of a sudden, shift on, shift off, then he's back out there. And it's like, hey, I thought you were going to limit him. You can't limit Jake Sanderson. When, no. when you're a coach and you want to win a game, and they ultimately beat Canada, you need Jake Sanderson on the ice. So it's unfortunate. It's we, we didn't see the injury. We're not like he kept playing, yeah. finished the game. So we'll see. He missed their last game, but USA finished first in the group. So they have a bye straight to the knockout round. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Hopefully Jake's good to go because that'd be a real shame if he went all the way over there just for 16 minutes and 59 seconds of ice time. Especially because he had to quarantine and go late yeah. and, and he's miss missing Nodak, Nodak games. games. Yeah, like and yeah, speaking of Nodak games, how about oh. that Tyler Clevin oh. hit? I mean, when which are people one? gonna learn? You gotta keep your head up, up out there when Tyler Clevin's <laughs> yeah. out there because he doesn't just hit people, like he destroys them. Like that was an insane hit. And Ross, we talked about it earlier. His timing is amazing how he's able to perfectly line up these hits time and time again. Yep, it's it's truly a remarkable talent. And it's one the sends when you see how this decor is coming together. Shabbat, Branstrom, Sanderson. And then you're just waiting. Like, sure, Lassie, JBD, you can throw those guys in the mix here. Zub even. Zub. None of them are like the big, physical, mean, like in-your-face type. That's Tyler <laughs> Clevin for you in a nutshell. So yep. he's going to be a big part of this decor. And, we got our stocks back when they were penny stocks, and they're already starting to chip away here. As with Sanderson out, Clevin has been the number one defenseman on this North Dakota hockey team that got a big couple wins this weekend, too. They had been reeling, and now, hey, they're all of a sudden, they're just starting to get this show on the road, and they need that because when Jake gets back, it's not going to get uh, – the schedule's not going to get any easier, I mean to say, so – Let's see uh, Let's see how they can do it here. I'm just pulling up. It was a 3-2 win on Friday, and then on Saturday, a 4-0 shutout victory for the squad. So, hey, they got to keep that up, and it'll be all smooth sailing here as Tyler Clevin had uh, two shots on goal, was plus two, and had three block shots to go along with that hit on Saturday. So huge weekend, I should say, not just night. Huge weekend for Sens prospects all over the globe if we're going all the way over to yeah. China with Jake Sanderson. Yeah, absolutely massive weekend for Sens prospects. In, and In Belleville too. Yeah, Belleville too, although we wanted Belleville to win this game up against the Hershey Bears for Troy Mann. You know, his old team would have been nice, but they put up a good effort, Ross. 5-4 loss. They scored two uh, uh, power play goals out of five chances. However, Hershey Bears get three out of five, and that final yeah. goal was a power play goal. So, Tough loss there. Mad Sogard was in net for that game. But you know what? Belleville's been doing much better lately. And 
The re- you look at the stat sheet right away, Ross, and you can tell why the Senators lost. No Uncle Deli goal or point. So that's pretty much a guarantee. Shame. Loss. Send him to the East Coast. S- send him to Florida <laughs> so he can work on his real estate. No doubt. That was a wild storyline. Uh, Michael Del Zotto getting yes. his Florida real estate license while in the middle of his, uh, his what, 12th, NA, or 12th pro, I should say, season. Yeah. Um, in, and he had a great, I don't want to say great. He had an article with Ian Mendez. Of course, it was well written, but it was kind of weird of me. To, to read a guy who's been demoted just kind of complaining and like taking subtle shots at the organization it's just but i mean he does have some ground to stand on the 100%. only he's still the only senator's defenseman in the nhl with a power play goal that yep. happened in november and he's at more than a point per game pace since he's been down in belleville so you know it, it's kind of a weird thing going on there but i can understand his frustration that's for sure yeah except then you look at the other side and you're just like Okay, he's making two million dollars per season, but like, why is he playing? Why is he not playing when there are some guys who are in the lineup consistently? Number three, number twenty-two, for example, who just get keep getting trotted out there no matter what happens. Yeah. So I understand the frustration as well. It's just kind of weird. Like, you think that's going to help him get called up? <laughs> I don't think he's even thinking about getting called no, up, Ross. Not. The main point was, I want to get traded. <laughs> yeah, <So. laughs> true. Well, he's not helping his value if he's just going to pout whenever something bad happens. But I, I get it from his point of view as well. It sucks, but I think a critic would say he should be very thankful that he's not stole, but I don't think anyone else was willing to give him that much money. Well, who knows? Yeah, the Ottawa we'll never know. were pretty stoked this, about him. This guy, this guy was on a PTO like two years ago. So he just got $4 million. I think he'll be okay. And now he's got real estate in his back pocket. But uh, Igor got a goal. That's great. Six shots for him as well. So that's another uh, another feather in his cap. He'll be joining us next week on Lockdown yes. Centers. We're just working out of time with the Shark Man himself. And let's get this B-Sense team on a run here. They got the win on Friday though, right? Uh, let me check their schedule quickly here. So much has happened since then. I know. That feels like a lifetime ago, eh? Jeez. I know. And now their website won't even let me click backwards. Anyways, great radio. The bottom line. No, no, they got it. They got it. They got the win. Yeah, as I, as I was saying so confidently, of course yep. they got the win on, <laughs> on Friday night. They're one point behind the Syracuse crunch right now, but they've got two games in hand. Really, though, they've got their eyes set on the Laval Rocket who have two games in hand on them. So it's not going to be easy to make the playoffs, but and that's their I next game, Ross. Let's go. When is it? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday at home against the Laval Rocket. We'll talk to you tomorrow though. And Wednesday we'll preview that game. Then hope you enjoyed our interview with Thomas Shabbat. Let us know in the comments, what your favorite part of the interview was. What did you learn about Thomas Shabbat that maybe you didn't know before, but for today we say goodbye for Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.